I love Rain Whispers. So I'm uh, just to say it, I love them so freaking much. They are adorable. Everything about them is pure and beautiful. They are such a well-written character. And it's it's great. You don't see like the the quirky adult. You know the quirky adult characters? Yes. That it's like very easily you can overdo it and make them like just annoying as shit. And it's like, this is the one character, I think even you heard, like, the way they talk, and you're like, that is spot on, that is fantastic. They are so great and so adorable, I want good things for them. Um, God, just, just anything to add, because you saw the episode? And I, I know, I keep messaging you, I've seen, I've rewatched the episode about four times now, um, both episodes, and I think I keep messaging you, like, new like, in exciting things, and I didn't think I could love them more, and then someone pointed out, like, like, their nose blushes when they blush in the show, and, like, precious little details. It's like, this is just such a well-thought-out, great character. I can't say enough good things about them. Um, I, I can say one bad thing, um, and that's, you haven't seen this episode, have you? I, what? I said, have you seen the episode? The yeah. Thing? Uh, then you know that Rain is a teacher who has started a gang with their students, which I think is great. Everyone should do that. I feel like everybody um, needs a professor like that at some Everyone point. needs a professor like that. <laughs> it's just so freaking cute. Because it's like, you have, like, like, the kids and then, like, the adult kid running around and we're going to do, like, what's the word? Like, tyranny. Like, tyranny. They are the bards against the throne, and it's great. Stop! They don't- no, it's great. And they call them- this is their crew. No, wait, this is my this only is thing. This is their crew. This is my only thing. I know it's supposed to be- Like, I know it's supposed to be, like, in the realm of D&D &D with that sort of, like, you know, like, you pick a coven, you pick this, you pick- Um, <laughs> way to turn it on its head with the bards rising up. <laughs> Bards are gonna rise up and they are gonna kick your ass with their violins. And it's so cute um, because they have, like, this is our warrior speech, and then they have Rain say Bards it. Bards are good at that. Bards are good at that. Uh, I think in the Adventure Zone, there is power in a bard song. I love that scene. Ooh, uh, I, hold on. I got it. Ooh. Oof. Ooh, that was a good scene. No, yes. I love, I love, like, the scene where where they're going to do like this we've got a statement and like rain stops like they are just reading this and guys do i really have to say this yes we decided on the script and then they screw the whole thing up i loved that i loved how like flustered and embarrassed they got because it's nerdy and it's silly and it's like oh shit i actually have to read this don't i can we talk uh, about the episode in its entirety just because God, i so feel like um and I'm not a real avid watcher of the Owl House. You are not. Um, but I do, like, I, I keep up with, with the high points. Um, and I do, I want to talk about this episode in its entirety, because I feel this one truly... How do I want to put this? So, Ida, Ida's Curse. Yes. Right? That was something that has been prevalent throughout the entire series, that, that has been, like, a, a big piece of her character. And I think this episode, for what it was able to accomplish with both old lore and new lore for the show, was almost perfect. Well, and you know how my saying is always, you know it's a good character where if you take them out of their current setting, if you take Rain out of season two, if you take the bats out of season two, and you put them back in the original setting... Would it work? Would it work? Or do they need to come in? And you always kind of feel that, like, in the second season with... And I'm I'm gonna go with an example real quick. Let's say Shaolin Showdown with Chase's character, and it's like, you couldn't put him back in season one because he was so needed after the characters developed the way they did. Well, and I guess that's it, too. I typically don't like new characters being added as the show progresses. Like, for example... Um, and I love Steven Universe, but I feel like there hit a point in the final season where there were just so many new characters and so many stories to follow along with that it got a little crowded at times. Now, in this particular instance, and I was a little skeptical 
with them introducing Rain. Like, was how is so, this going to work? I saw the promo art, and I was right. not hopeful. How are they going to fit into um, the show? Is it, you know, I, I think we, we just talked previously about, like, um, Final Space. It was Final Space. Adding in uh, new things in the season, and it was just, like, with everything, with all the storytelling and all the lore that we already had, it just didn't all work and that was I guess my fear for this episode was that with all the lore we already have with all everything that we already know Would how is this new character going to fit like even um uh uh what is the the, the shapeshifter's name which shapeshifter for lose v v okay um so v worked because it, I was I was about to say it was it was kind of like a um, hey, so she, what a fun adventure you've been having. Uh, how's your mom moment? You know what well, I mean? And, and they, this they made sense. Up, they built up to V and just like Rain, it's like, oh, I wish we could have them back because they they weren't, I will give them this, they weren't typical Disney characters. You know, you get like the one-off bitchy new character. They're there for a week and, oh, well, you're just sad because your life is so pathetic or, oh, they're my best friend and a lot of shows it's very hit or miss when they introduce like the this is my ex or this is my old friend they're gonna be here for an episode oh this episode did it flawlessly I, it felt as though rain had been there same with v it felt like they had been there the whole time well in that they were they were needed and it wasn't they just to drive like ida's plot along it wasn't just to drive Luce's plot along this I mean, at Luce's mom. It it showed what she was doing. It wrapped I, both worlds I together. I do want to say, this was the first Owl House episode for me. And again, I think this is going to make me public enemy number one. This was the first episode for me where you felt... And I, I read a lot of fantasy. Um, and I don't think... There was one, one I have seen in a long time that I actually felt scared for this character. I actually want to see them come out of this alive and well. And it was a beautiful scene. It was, you didn't want this character to go. You didn't want them to... Are you talking about with... Well, actually, After... both. Yeah, with both. Rain and V. You didn't want them to go. You didn't want anything bad to happen to them. You actually felt afraid for them. Because it's not like, you know, they're in the opening credits. It's not like, oh, they, they could come out of this okay. Well, they don't have protagonist shield they don't have protagonist these are shield. characters that were put in here and and I, again that was my fear was they're gonna put them in here and then what are they just here to drive the plot and then they're out are they here for good are they here and seriously in the course of that one episode i was it, hooked it, it was it was perfect i am extremely impressed with how they you... worked with the characters because they drove not only the old plot but they drove the new plot and that that, that was good that was telling to me when i showed you the episode or i showed you part of the episode where like rain and ida are flirting and it it was cute because it, it worked for rain's character it was this little flirty silly bard moment because they're a bard well, and that too rain was in the show not just to be Ida's ex, but as a full fleshed out character. Same with V. We even the got... breakup. Hold on. Even the breakup. That was beautiful. That... that whole scene was just so like right person, wrong perfect. time. Perfect. And it, it made you laugh. It made you emotional. Um, and by you, I mean me. But they, <laughs> you you do get emotional. <laughs> I not always, but yes, like always. especially that, and it was great. And I I've seen people complain about the breakup scene that how dare Rain leave Ida when she needed them most. And the problem with that is that no, they left because they didn't know. Well, what and that was, was explained. On. That was explained. That's another, and and this is so important in kid shows. Um showing all types of relationships. And what I loved about this one is that it showed that there was no, I don't want to say that there was no right or wrong in the situation, but that both characters did 
what, what was best for themselves to. at the time. Um, and that doesn't always mean that it's it's going to be what's best the entire time. And that was beautifully done. I mean, same you could say the same with, with V and, and Luce. They both did what they needed to do that was best for them at the time. It doesn't mean that it always will be what's best, but you do what you, you know, what you have to do. You have to. And, and that it does, it has an effect on not just the one character, but you saw the effect that this had on Rain. You saw the effect that it had on Ida, that it had on V and Luce and Luce's mom. Even when they reunite, and it's, and even Rain says that they don't know what Ida's running from. They still don't know because she never told them. And even with all of Ida's development, it's like Rain still wouldn't know this. Well, and even as an adult, and what I really appreciated about um, Ida in this was that she's an adult. But she still, and she is completely within her right to still struggle with these problems. It's not like, hey... You're older now, and so you should be able to go. And, and no, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes these, like, like, it, just because you hit a certain age does not mean that all of a sudden all of your trauma is cured. You're an adult now. You know how to communicate 100% of the time in a, um, not compelling way, but in a in a productive way. As adults, we are still entitled to. That Our struggle. The the struggles. And and that was just so I love that they didn't just have like Rain come back in. Hey, why'd you do that? Hey, let's have this conversation. You saw Ida struggle with all the characters. All the characters and in I this episode how, struggled you know with what I loved about that. What's that? And I know you were going on a tangent, but what I love about that is that Rain wasn't told by Ida. Of course they know about the curse. I know this. But it was all things that Rain picked up on themselves. You know, there's a scene where she's performing bard magic and it starts killing everything in the room. And suddenly she's, nope, oh, here you go, I gotta go. It's like Rain picked up on that. Um, the scene where they're, they're getting rid of the other two coven leaders and they're playing their instruments and it starts killing everything in the area. It's about to kill the two of them, Which, too. visually, this episode was also phenomenal. I, I had just chills. I rewatched that have scene to put so that many out times. There. But there's a scene where, and they, they are going to save everyone. They, you know, we have to get rid of, you know, the three coven heads so they can't perform the spell. That's kind of, you know, sacrifice one to save the many. And Ida's like, okay, we play on. And it's killing everything. It's killing the two of them. And a photo... It falls out of her hair, and Rain sees a picture of her with her kids, and just the desperation, the confusion, the the voice acting was when on. They point. realize that when they realize she has a family now, she has children. She, I'm gonna say, she's a mother now, and you see like the, it's not even like a moment of okay, we're gonna end up saving them too, but we have to do this. It's rain that magics away the instrument. It's like, I don't know what she's going through, what she's running from, but it's like, you know what? But, and sometimes You're... we need, I mean, just, just like as people, sometimes we need people to kind of pull us back and go, hey, wait a minute. Look at what you have. Look at, and, Look at yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but that, again, is, it's just so perfect because it's not like, and it's not like, Rain ever makes Ida confront her problems. What I loved about Rain is that Rain doesn't understand what Ida is going through. And that's okay. But that's okay. They're not going to pretend like, like, you know, like, it's quite uptown. I don't pretend to know the challenges you're facing. That line. You're just, like, combining Hamilton and yes. the Owl House. Yes, and it works. It really works. But that's the thing, is that they're not going to pretend to know what Ida's going through. It's like they don't know, but they do know that she's going through something. And they're just in, and they're she's there. entitled to that. They're yeah. there. And then the rest of it, like Rain's sacrifice and, and all of it, all of it so well done, so beautiful. 